one of our core problems is to solve linear systems of equations. So we write that as an equation AX equals B, where A is an M by N matrix, B is an M by 1 vector, those are the knowns, and X is an N by 1 vector that is to be determined. So if we write those out, uh, the coefficients of A multiply the X's, and then the B sit on the right-hand side. So it's always important to remember that the rows of A correspond to equations, and the columns of A correspond to the variables. Now for quite a while, we're just going to focus on the square case, where M is equal to N, so A is a square matrix. And then we say that A is non-singular, or we say it's invertible, if there exists an inverse matrix, such that the product of A with its inverse is the identity. If A is invertible, if A has an inverse, then we can use it to solve the system of equations. We multiply on the left, on both sides, by A inverse. We use that associative property of multiplication. And then we use the fact that A inverse A is the identity. And the identity times anything is the thing. There's our solution X to the system. But there's a huge catch here, uh, which is that finding A inverse is not easy, which you know if you tried to do it in a linear algebra course. Uh, but it's also not easy to do or efficient to do computationally. And we'll pretty much never do it. So we need something else to solve linear systems. There is one type of linear system that is easy to solve, and that's what we call a triangular system of equations. So triangular can refer to the system or it can refer to the matrix. So in this case, we would call this matrix here a lower triangular matrix. It only has elements on the diagonal and below. And this would be an upper triangular matrix. So it only has non-zero elements on the main diagonal and above. So it's easy to see how to solve one of these systems just by an example. Here's an example of a lower triangular system. So we'll start with the first row. That represents the first equation of the system. And the structure tells us that only x1 is involved in that equation, so we can solve for it right away. Then when we look to the second row, well, it involves only x1 and x2, but we just found x1. So now we can consider it known, and we can solve for x2. Then we go to the next row, and only the first three variables are used. And since we've already found the first two, that lets us solve for the third, and so on. You see how this could continue down to any size. So this process is called forward substitution. You start at the top and work your way left or right with the variables. For an upper triangular system, the corresponding algorithm is called backward substitution. It's pretty much the same, except that you start at the last row with the last variable, and you work your way up and to the left. So the last row, we can solve for xn right away. And then the next row only involves variables xn minus 1 and xn. So we can solve for xn minus 1 and so on. We can keep working our way all the way up to the first row. One important thing about both types of substitution is that you'll notice that in the denominators, we have all the different diagonal elements of A. And if one of those were to be 0, this process breaks down. There's no way to continue. That sounds bad. But actually, it works out perfectly for us because you can actually use the algorithms to prove the theorem you can prove that A is a singular matrix if one of those numbers is 0 and vice versa. The only time the substitution process will fail on us is when the matrix is singular, and we know that in that case the system might have infinitely many solutions or no solutions at all, so the whole thing is much more complicated.